Hello folks. This is the Amico ARC 200. It is very inexpensive for a 200 amp dual voltage stick welder, particularly one that boldly claims an 80% duty cycle at max output. That is well above just about anything else out there. I thought it would be fun to test that duty cycle and see how it does. It also claims a max output of 145 amps at 80% duty cycle when running on 120 volts, which is extraordinarily high for a stick welder. That high output means the maximum input draw spec on 120 volts is 50 amps. If true, it seems unlikely that the max output on 120 volts will be practical or even possible to use on typical 20 amp circuits. I will be testing max draw on both 120 volts and 240 volts, so we'll find out. The input components would definitely have their work cut out for them to operate at 50 amps for an 80% duty cycle. Of course, if it actually draws anywhere near that, it wouldn't take long to trip a 20 amp breaker, which is the highest most people have in their houses anyways on 120 volt circuits. So most likely you'd never be able to get to an 80% duty cycle when running on 120 volt anyway. Whether or not a welder is capable of the rated duty cycle isn't simply a matter of whether or not it will shut off on over temp protection. The duty cycle should be rated such that it prevents any internal components from operating above rated temperatures. Most electronic components will have a much lower service life when operated above a certain temp. Current ratings of electronic components are also often lower the hotter they run. So if a component gets too hot, the safe amperage it can handle may drop. This can cause a component to fail suddenly at an amperage that it may have safely handled at a lower temperature. How quickly a unit shuts down on over temp depends entirely on where the sensor is located and what temp it is set to trip at. So even if this welder doesn't shut down on over temp before the duty cycle is reached, that doesn't guarantee that internal components are operating at safe temperatures. I have thermocouples attached inside on the high and low side IGBTs. I have one also connected to the heat sink right next to where this welder's overtemp sensor is connected. I also have a fourth one connected to one of the input rectifiers, but it's not connected very well, so I don't know how well the heat will transfer between the two, so I may not get a perfect reading on that one. But either way, it will be interesting to see what kind of temperatures we get. An 80% duty cycle means that the welder should be able to weld for 8 minutes out of every 10. So it's not simply that it can weld for 8 minutes continuously, but that with only 2 minutes of cool down, it can go another 8 minutes without issue. Hopefully my temp sensors will tell us how quickly things heat up and how quickly they cool back down so we can get an idea of how likely it is to handle subsequent 8 minute runs, even if it handles the first 8. Let's get started with the testing.
Okay, it was about 72 degrees Fahrenheit in the garage when I did these tests. Certainly not cold, but it's not 95 degrees either. I did learn something interesting about Amico welders. I was planning to use my long, heavy-duty welding cables rather than the included ones. This would have let me leave the welder on the bench, but the DINs connectors I've purchased locally, and in fact all the DINs connectors that have come with name brand welders over the years, did not fit in the Amico welder. The DINs connectors on this are a slightly shallower design, and the other ones do not fit. So I used the included cables. They worked, but they got nearly too hot to touch, and the insulation got really soft. So there's that. With a stick welder, I can't quite do a continuous weld because I have to change rods. I considered welding a little longer than eight minutes to make up for the difference, but after looking at the temps, I doubt it would have mattered much. After eight minutes of welding as continuously as I could, the hottest sensor was one of the IGBTs at just over 80 degrees C. Temps were fairly consistent for the last two rods, so I doubt even an extra minute would have made much difference anyway. ADC is pretty toasty, but most IGBTs are rated at a max operating temp of 150 C. Granted, that's the internal junction temperature, and my thermocouple was clamped to the outside of the chip, but I still don't think the IGBTs were overheating. The maximum current they can handle does drop as temp increases, so I can't say that they were running within the recommended amperage for 80 degrees Celsius, but they certainly weren't just outright too hot. The heatsink itself stayed relatively cool and didn't seem like it was saturating or failing to keep up, and the input rectifier was completely fine. It may be a different story at 90 degrees ambient temp, which it actually recently was for a couple of weeks around here, but I'm not going to complain about the cooler temps. Overall, this welder does seem to handle 80% duty cycle at 72 degrees ambient fairly well. I can't guarantee it will be long-term reliable if operated at that duty cycle regularly, but so far so good. I actually ran it for 8 minutes straight two separate times. I didn't put both clips in because it was just more of the same and not that exciting. I did monitor the temps both times and the results were virtually the same in both tests. So why do more expensive brands usually have lower duty cycles? It is possible that Amico didn't really validate the duty cycle and they are simply relying on the fact that most users will never run rods at 200 amps back to back as quickly as they can for eight minutes just for the heck of it. In other words, most people don't really need an 80% duty cycle at 200 amps and will likely run the welder well under that most of the time. This welder did hold up to my testing and it may be fine to run it that hard every day. It's also possible that I'm stressing some component and drastically reducing its life. More expensive machines often have longer warranties, and they probably rate the duty cycle more conservatively to help ensure longer service life, especially in situations where they could get extensive use. Ultimately, the 80% duty cycle may or may not be optimistic for long-term reliability, but at least on 240 volts, it was able to do it without any obvious issues. On 120 volts, it tripped the breaker within a few seconds when maxed out. So, whether or not the welder is capable, the 80% duty cycle on 120 volts is kind of pointless. So that's it for today. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want me to test out with this welder, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.